All right, what's up, folks? Uh, it is the 23rd of June. Obviously, I'm a little excited for some basketball tonight, but in the meantime, we got some baseball DFS to break down. I uh, got kind of a split slate today. We are right in the midst of the day slate, but we got night slate as well. And let's get into it. I like these split slates, man. Uh, more work for us, but the smaller the slates, kind of the more I like them. Yeah, but not so small that it's like no. two games. Yeah, the smaller is for like a main slate. You know, I, I don't like the two, three gamers, but five to seven games I, I'm, I really dig on. All right, guys. So today's show is brought to you by our good friends at Drafters, and I have to give a quick shout out. You've seen us do a couple of Drafters shows with our boy Stephen Casey. Uh, I checked the scores last night because I knew my team was doing well. Morton was big time. Uh, had some good bats in the A's game and thought I had this thing on lockdown. But Stephen Casey, come from behind dub late at night. You're the man. You're good looking. I'm unattractive. You're smart. I'm stupid. Nice dub yesterday. You took it down. Way to go, buddy. Uh, we'll come for you again soon enough, though. Yeah, let's uh, get it. Hopefully, maybe later this afternoon, if not tomorrow. Promo code DFS 5 pack. Sign on up and click on the Facebook group below so you can start drafting with us. Monthly and weekly memberships available at the website link below. Subscribe to the station if you're new to it. Let's talk about today's pitchers. So you're not going to love your pitchers today, right? This isn't Jacob DeGrom taking on the Tigers no matter where you go. But a guy that we're both looking at, and we both kind of started the day looking at before even conversing with one another, was James Caprillion of the Oakland Athletics. Um, again, it's hard for me to get bullish on this one because I liked Montez the other day against this Rangers team and they blew him up. It happens, though. It doesn't literally have any influence over what the today is. And Caprillion has been really, really good this year. So uh, he's not currently protect, projected as huge chalk. But you and I seem to agree on this. We both expect him to get a decent amount of love today, really just because the other pitching options aren't great. Yeah, really good spot against Texas. I'm a fan of this kid. He's slowly, absolutely become more of a fan as the season's gone on. Listen to him talk recently. I really like the cut of his jib. You know, came up in the Yankees farm system, has a chip on his shoulder from getting dealt from there. I like Caprillion. I'm like I said, I've become a much bigger fan of his. Doesn't mean he's going to pitch well tonight, but great spot against Texas. He's in good form right now. I'm a, becoming a fan of this kid. Why wouldn't I like him here? You know. All right, next up. So let's talk about the kid. Wander Franco was nothing short of wondrous last night. Uh, monster first game. I mean, legit, this guy's averaging 27 drafting points per game. So how do you not lock him in at the minimum? Obviously, that's uh, a bit tongue-in-cheek right there, but he's still 2K. Uh, he's got a very mediocre matchup with an aged Garrett Richards. So he's, at this point of his career, probably already better of a hitter than Garrett Richards' his pitcher. Plus, he's 2K yeah. at, a, at a shortstop position that you, know, you just kind of want to lock him in. He's a switch hitter. So no matter who they bring in later, he's got the platoon advantage. Uh, he's a tough fade at this price tag. Now, again, we talked about this kind of jokingly. Mike Trout can take the offer off a of batting tee if he hits it right at people. But, you know, at 2K, he's definitely a cash game lock. And he's a risky fade in GPPs. Definitely a risky fade. I would say he's definitely a better hitter than Garrett Richards' pitcher. No question about that. Um, yeah, he's much more of like a 5K hitter than 2K. Reminds me a little bit of Aldoberto Mondesi when we see him priced really cheap. And then in a couple weeks, he's like 5K plus. This kid's better than Mondesi, so a ton to like about him at 2K. Yeah, he's supposed to be just as good as some of these other elite young players. Again, our sample size is one game, but clearly the moment's not too big for him as he was ripping the ball all over the place last night, took a walk to boot. Um, he was popular yesterday. He'll be even more popular today. For sure. All right, next up, a guy who, when he first came up, had a lot of the same buzz with him just based on how quickly he just took off. You know, we've seen a real you know, up and down a couple of seasons from Cody Bellinger. And he's hit the IL a couple times this year, but he's back tonight. Uh, and he's really, really inexpensive for what he offers. And it's not been a great season, but that doesn't affect Cody Bellinger necessarily moving forward for the rest of this year. And he's, you know, very affordable for the upside he offers. Yeah, really affordable. We know who Bellinger is. Again, it's not the perfect spot. He's coming back from the injured list. Hasn't had the greatest of years, but it's baked into the price, right? We know his upside's real. Musgrove, Showed big upside at the beginning of the year. Not really a guy I want to stack against, but not afraid to pull up a couple hitters against him. And Bellinger's upside at 4,100 is real. 4,300, but still real. 4,300, excuse me. All right, next up, 4,100. Maybe that's what you were thinking. Uh, Michael Brantley's 4,100. Your former Indians guy, I mean, he is the definition of more solid than spectacular, but quite honestly, like, he's solid almost every day, it feels like. This guy is just a good professional 
hitter. He's not going to hit 30 home runs. He's not going to steal 30 bases. But he gives you a good professional at bat every single time he's up there. The Astros are going to be chalk again. Their whole outfield is going to be chalk. He is absolutely on fire right now with 9 of 15 and three walks over his past four games. He's very affordable at 4,100. I mean, this is, I, to me, he's a little bit more of your old school type of player, right? That he's just a good hitter. And he doesn't, he doesn't strike out a lot, doesn't hit for a lot of power. But in that throwback type of a way, he's one of the better hitters in baseball. Yeah, he really is. Perfect fit for a stack. He's a guy that, you know, hit, comes up with, with runners on a ton. Red hot right now. He's not like the greatest hitter for DFS purposes because he doesn't run. He doesn't have a ton of power. But when he's in a nice groove like this, hitting in the middle of, you know, the top lineup on paper tonight, there's so much to like about him at this price point. I mean, he could easily be 5,100 here. And while, you know, you don't really think of Brantley as a 5,100 dollar hitter, in this spot, he is. Man, you remember when he was, you know, back when he was on your Indians? Oh, yeah. Like, he was a 2020 yeah, Perino guy, but like him being a first round draft pick, doesn't that seem like ages ago? It does. One of the one of the best hitters in the AL. Man, him being the number well, a first round overall fantasy pick. I mean, for me, that feels like four hundred years ago, and I realize I'm not four hundred years old, but that's about how long ago it feels like. He's just a seasoned quality veteran hitter. I don't ever remember him being quite that high, so it was that long ago. I, I remember him being in like you know second third rounds, but it's getting not that far off and. Man, it must have been 10 years ago at this point. At least, right? I mean, this was late first, early second, but that was back when he was going to hit 25 home runs and steal 25 bases, or at least, you know, it was not a long period of time where he was up there because he started dealing with injuries right away. But he had a big season that I specifically remember him being like an end of the first round, early second round type of pick. And God, that you know, if that doesn't seem like 20 decades ago, I don't know what does. Yeah, no, I'm with you 100%. It's a good call out. All right, as usual, you like the Yankees today. Uh, Luke Voigt, who, again, I've had him stash on the IL, I feel like, all year long in my year in my year long league. So I'm happy to have this guy back. I need his power. Uh, and he just, you know, kind of jumped off the IL yesterday with a monster game. So why wouldn't he be in play today at 4K? Big bat for the Yankees to get back. Looked really good. Homer in his first at bat had like a 10 pitch walk. Again, he's 4K in a stack I really like. A bunch of these Yankees are pricey. Voigt's not. He works in all formats as far as I'm concerned. I think you can fill in with him in cast games even if you don't want to stack the Yankees. He works in a stack in tournaments. He works as a one-off. He's just a good look at 4K in this spot. Didn't this guy have like 22 home runs last year in the 60-game season? Yeah. Didn't he like lead? Did he lead the AL? I think he did. I think he did too. I mean – I really think about it. You project that over a 160 game season, and I, I know it doesn't work exactly that way. But this guy like was paced out for 44. 60. I mean, like 60 home runs. Yeah, which you know, even if you take that down a little bit, I mean, he's a 40 plus home run guy. He is a lot of pop in this bat for sure. All right, guys, uh, that is the skinny for today. Best of luck and everything tonight, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks, guys.